Five. I wonder what my audience would be like if I started my show with a little more zest. You are now live. Welcome to Coffee with Ken. <laughs> Probably wake up my neighbors. Excuse me, sir. Knock, 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 knock. We've got a noise complaint. Your neighbors say it loud. Sounds like you're doing a podcast. Do you realize you're staying in an extended stay? It is a, violates the rules of extended stay to go live and do a podcast. Cease and desist immediately. Well, this is fun. I got people hopping on Instagram. I'm going live on YouTube. Uh, I'm simulcasting. I've got my coffee brewed. Got my Illini shirt on. I wonder if they won yesterday. We don't even know. We don't even know. And I'm going to get up and I'm going to go get my coffee. And I'm going to uh, say hi uh, to uh, uh, my new audience here on Instagram. Good morning, Wanda. Wanda, I'm doing something kind of fun today. Kind of fun today. I'm uh, going live on YouTube and on Instagram at the same time. Wanted to see how, how it worked out. My fear, and I have a lot of fear. I'm a guy that struggles with anxiety is that the platform that is YouTube isn't a uh, one that does a whole heck of a lot of live going and a, li a lot of live interaction. And therefore, I'm going to try and do it on both channels and see if I can get the interaction here on Instagram while also putting on live content for what it's ever worth on YouTube. And the neat thing about doing this and about technology and about a bunch of stuff we'll talk to uh, about is that the cost of it is non-existent and the cost is only time spent. Good morning, Luke Mitchell. The top is only, uh, or the top, the cost is only time spent because I started doing my show on YouTube. Oh, they play this coming Saturday. They play Purdue and good morning to you. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that information. Somebody just told me Illinois didn't play yesterday. I thought I saw in the scrolling, uh, I was watching uh, my daughter's team. Uh, she went to, she goes to Iowa State. And I was watching them play uh, Baylor yesterday. And I thought I saw it along the bottom and say, Illinois plays Indiana at 3.30. Apparently they did not. I appreciate the information. But good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy, and this is Coffee with Ken. It is Sunday morning. It is 6.09 a.m. It is October 6th. The reason I know that is because my brother's birthday was yesterday. Uh, happy birthday, Scott. If Scott's tuning in, he tunes in from time to time. Uh, he turned 61. I would say he's a very vibrant 61-year-old. Uh, he got a video from our mutual buddy. We'll just call him Tom because that's his name. And uh, my buddy Tom, our buddy Tom, who's 10 years older than me, makes him 66. I'll tell you what, he looks damn good for 66 and was going on some five-mile run hike uh, where he lives in California. So, Tommy boy, you're an inspiration to the younger folk. And you're looking good. And it was kind of cool. He was wearing his Downers Grove North hat because he went to Downers Grove North, as did my brother, as did I, as did my sister, and as did my other brother. And uh, they're like nationally ranked in cross country right now. Uh, and I think he's pretty proud of that because he was a real good runner there. And uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, happy Sunday. I'm going to go get my cup of coffee and uh, start... My show, I guess my show started. What does it mean to start your show? Is it after the intro? Is it after you push the live button? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but either way, I'm gonna go grab some coffee, probably get my watch so I don't feel naked. Make sure my chair feels comfortable. Uh, I feel comfortable. So you guys sit back, relax in a perfect world, go get some coffee, get a little water. We're gonna meet back here and like, 15, maybe 20 seconds. I'm just going to go over there. I'm staying in an extended stay. It's not too big. I don't have to go downstairs and go into the kitchen and 
get everything ready and then go to the dining room where I'm going to enjoy my coffee. Oh no, there's a certain intimacy where I'm at today. And uh, I'm gonna go enjoy the intimacy and go get my coffee. We'll talk soon. I mean, I might keep talking while I'm away. Oh, open up the microwave. Dump the hot water out of it. Tapping water, that'd be cool. Pour some delicious coffee in my cup. Bring it on back. Bring it on back. Oh, Papa Squat. Oh, this is fun. This feels good. I can do this. I wasn't sure. I uh, wasn't sure. I woke up early this morning. And, uh, I mean, I woke up too early. I woke up like 520. I had a bunch of negative thoughts. I've been going through some conflict. Greetings from Ireland. Uh, I've been going through some conflict in my life. I don't like conflict. I do not like conflict. It weighs heavily. I think about it a lot. I worry about it. I fret about it. For somebody that struggles with anxiety, I wonder if other people that are anxious out there uh, avoid conflict. I bet they do. Because there's nothing calming about conflict. I mean, maybe for somebody, if it's such focused conflict, uh, it gives somebody peace, like they're still connected or something like that. But for me, I just want to get as far away from it as possible. And I haven't been able to, to be honest with you. And it's kind of got me frustrated. And when I woke up this morning, I was thinking about it and I didn't like the feeling. I don't know who would. It's just some people, it's like a sport. Huh. But anyway, let me get to this real quickly because I just poured my coffee and my show is named Coffee with Ken. And I am excited to, oh, that was really hot. <laughs> I'm excited to have my first sip of coffee this morning, and I want to thank you guys for joining here on YouTube and here on Instagram, and I appreciate you. I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, uh, you have a nice hot cup of coffee in front of you. Cheers to us. Oh, wow. It is hot today. It is hot today. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Some pumpkin spice. Starbucks pumpkin spice. My coffee supplies are gonna are running a little low. Got a little of the smoked uh, butterscotch and a little bit of the pumpkin spice uh, in my kitchen behind me. Got the bathroom light, which you can see over there. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like that. Kind of throwing me off. Kind of ruining my vibe, if you know what I mean. Is that better? I don't know if that's better. Let me try one more thing. Let me try one more thing. Kind of a dim, we'll call that my mood lighting. Maybe when I get really fancy, I'll get like a lava lamp or something. Wait, ooh, oh. Chat disconnected. Please wait while we reconnect you. Uh-oh. My chat was disconnected on YouTube. How horrible is that? My audience of two that are watching me on YouTube aren't able to interact with me. We are experiencing technical difficulties. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm going to just try and chat again. Hello. Are you there? See, it's a little easier here on Instagram. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I hope the Instagram audience doesn't feel like I'm cheating on them. We don't. We're not in that committed of a relationship, are we? Oh. Oh, cheers to you out by Rockford. Where are you by Rockford? My sister lives in Roscoe. I was at a cross country meet. And talking to a former coach of my daughter's, and she was out in Belvedere, so I know the area pretty well. But anyway, welcome uh, from Rockford. Mm. Again, I'm coming at you from Naperville, Illinois, western suburb of Chicago, about 145 miles west. Uh, not 145 miles. 
about 35 miles west of Chicago. About 145 to 150,000 people here in Naperville. It's a beautiful town. It's a town I'm fortunate to call home. It's a town I'm staying at an extended stay at while I'm looking for places. Um, well, somewhere between two-bedroom apartments and little baby single-family homes. Uh, I'm a twice-divorced guy, and uh, as you probably know watching, life is kind of expensive right now, and uh, my income's not at the level I'd like it to be. I'm waiting tables. I work about five or six nights a week, uh, enjoying that, but uh, not where I want to be, but I'm where I want to be going. I'm headed in the right direction, and... Uh, uh, it feels good to be headed in the right direction. I think most of my life, I know most of my life, I chasing things. I hate to use the word idol. <laughs> they used idols in our my church service over the last few weeks. That if we put our love, I don't want to get too talky about religion, because I think religion's personal and faith is personal. Hello, Riyad. Uh, faith is personal and our beliefs are personal and I'm into you guys believe in whatever you want to believe. But part of a lot of faiths is evangelism and kind of talking people in or sharing the message. I'm a very low pressure salesperson. Uh, and I don't even know where I believe or where I fit in. Uh on the whole uh, faith spectrum. All I know is uh, I like to go to church on Sunday mornings. I uh, have felt a whole lot better about life after, now that I've started to believe in a higher power or believe I can talk to somebody while I'm laying in uh, bed in the morning feeling stressed and feeling worried. And I feel there's a reason uh, for what we go through and the adventures that are life, and uh, that feels good. That feels good. I'll tell you, I was had a strange thought. And I, I'm going to offend people of faith, especially Christians, because I go to a Christian church. But I figure I, I am allowed to explore my thoughts. Right. I was wondering if the whole purpose, because there's been a religions in faith and higher powers all through time and all through the history of man. And I'm wondering if faith or religion or spirituality was created to explain the thoughts and explain life a little bit and what we have going on in our heads. And when I was laying this morning in bed and I'm going, oh, it's 5.30, I'm stressed, I'm dealing in conflict, I'm fighting with this person, I'm worried about this, I'm struggling about this, that that became described as the devil. And then I turn over to this shoulder and I go, thank you, God, for my comfortable bed. Uh, thank you, God, for my beautiful children, the roof I have over my head, the... Uh, coffee I'm going to be making, the peace in my heart, the love in my soul, and the health in my body. And that's God. So when your mind is in a negative place, <laughs> you're talking to the proverbial devil on your shoulder. And when you can get your mind in a positive place, you're talking to the angel or God on your shoulder. And I think, for me, religion or spirituality or faith is so much that, and it's kind of a tug of war between good and evil in my mind and in my heart and what have you. And, uh, uh, yeah, I could see that's how religion started and faith started. Because we needed to explain to ourselves 
the bad thoughts we had and the struggles we had and the bad stuff that happened in our lives. And uh, we also needed to be connected to some goodness and some positivity and some hope and some good feelings. That's what I think about when I'm laying in bed in the morning. <laughs> Got lots of jokes. Some of them are kind of dirtyish. Not dirty. When I was married, I would usually be thinking about different things as I was laying in bed. Now that I'm twice divorced, I think about the devil and the angel on my shoulder and the fight in my mind. Maybe I should get married again. What do you think? Third time a charm? Mm. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Sunday morning. I want to thank you for joining. Um, Sunday's a day I like to go to church. And again, I go to a church here in Naperville called the Community Christian Church. Uh, enjoy it a lot. Today, I'm, uh, again, I said it earlier, I was waiting tables. I think the life of a waiter or a server is a non-family friendly relationship life. Because we have a meeting today at 10 o'clock at my restaurant. And I'm going, huh. It's usually when I like to go to church. It's weird to have a meeting conflicting with my church schedule. Everyone knows Sunday is the day of Sabbath and the day we go to church with our family. How could they schedule a meeting on that day during the morning? Kind of got me wondering... Um, is it, I mean, I guess I know it's not the right place for me long term. I love my job. The money's good. Uh, the people are nice. The customers are fun. Uh, but I, I'm 56 years old and my body's aching and sore and standing a lot and moving around a lot. Maybe it's keeping me young and spry. Uh, but again, I would like, I don't know, something about working late. Working early, something about that random schedule. It's kind of hard to schedule around. And with four beautiful kids uh, that I'm trying to see as much as I can, yet I have the need to make as much money as I can. And I've told my bosses to schedule me as much as possible or every shift available I pretty much take. Uh, that's kind of hard and it conflicts with family life and a lot of things that I value. Uh, such as going to church on a Sunday morning, or I had to schedule ahead and take off yesterday so I could go to a cross country meet with my oldest daughter, Erin. And next Friday, I'm taking off the day, so I, you know, the night, if you will, so I can go watch my uh, daughter, Morgan, cheer at a football game. And uh, maybe it just takes a little more planning. Maybe it is a career for the young, the unwed, the uh, whatever, non-familial people. I mean, I bet if I looked around at the people I'm working with, uh, the people that had kids in that work in my restaurant would be a very small percentage. Huh. But I think you do what you got to do. And right now for me, uh, what I got to do is waiting tables and go in, going in with a good attitude and working hard and uh, doing my best. Being there early, 10 a.m. <laughs> Not sure why I'm, I mean, I know why I'm starting at 10 today. Because we have a meeting. Maybe the restaurant will be busy for lunch. Maybe we'll make the big bucks. A little bit of the tough thing, and this is, uh, again, about serving and waiting. You're, you, you're getting better. You enjoy it. You might make a little more money. You're more capable of handling bigger tables, bigger shifts, and what have you. But you're not, like, truly building on something. Uh, the work I did yesterday doesn't really contribute to any, uh, to what I'm going to do today, and so on. And in my careers, 
such as being a realtor for 17 years. Have I ever mentioned that I've been a realtor for 17 years? Uh, every day of work, you were putting a, laying a new brick to the foundation that was your real estate career. You were touching a new person. You were uh, getting a little better known. You were sending out messages. You were saying, hey, you know, do you know anyone looking to buy or sell? Or... But after 17 years, I'd had enough of that crap and <laughs> left it two years ago. So let's drink a little more coffee. Mm. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of sad. I told you guys on Instagram. I go live every morning and I usually go live on Instagram or TikTok. And for some reason this morning, I said, hey, let's see how we, how my life, if I go live on YouTube, how it's going to work out. And it's kind of working out. I've got one, it's a quiet audience on both pages. I got one person on YouTube and 13 people on Instagram. It hurts my feelings just a little bit. Not really. I love you. Oh, the one person on YouTube left. I love you. Oh, maybe they came over to Instagram because I bumped up to 14. I love you, 14. Thank you for joining me this morning. Um, yeah. And some other important world, <laughs> world solving thoughts. Yesterday was a kind of challenging day. It was a great day. I got to see my big girl, Erin. It was super fun. It was beautiful. We went to a cross country meet at a real pretty cross country course. Uh, what, cheer on her team that she used to run for. And uh, that was just a super neat experience. She got to, you know, I kind of stand in the distance and see the girls that she's saying hey to, and they're all excited to hear her. And, uh, the team was warming up and kind of getting in a group and uh, uh, she was kind of nervous slash embarrassed and didn't want to interrupt. And I go, oh, they'd love to see you. And the coach actually called her into the ring and uh, asked her to say a few words. And uh, uh, it was just a neat experience and neat being uh, connected to and uh, uh, neat being out, neat, enjoying the weather, neat, cheering on our team, and uh, just a neat way to spend my morning with my girl. So, honestly, it was probably the most, it's going to sound sad, the most quality time I've spent with my daughter in such a long time. You know, it was kind of four hours of us together doing what she likes to do and what I like to do. And uh, with her friends, kind of. But, I, you know, I got to be there, but not... Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you have daughters out there and they're getting into their teens, they don't necessarily think in, hanging out with their dad or their mom probably is the coolest thing to do. And yesterday, I think she thought it was neat. And she hung out with me and... You know, she also hang out with her friends, but either way, it was neat. And we got to spend the entire morning together and scream, cheer for her friends. A bunch of the girls on the team said they missed me because I cheer really loudly. Oh, I do cheer really loudly. I figure, what's the point of cheering quietly? Hey, nice job. <laughs> nice job. I tend to bring a little more enthusiasm. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. My stream finished. Over on YouTube. I don't know why. <laughs> I wonder why that was. Hello. Well, okay. We're just going to get what we can from that. We're going to learn what we can and be okay and not panic about it. But for some reason, and anybody new tuning in here on Instagram, I was trying to go live on uh, both uh, TikTok and, or excuse me, Instagram and YouTube at the same time. But for some reason, my stream just finished over on YouTube. So <laughs> I appreciate you, Instagram. <laughs> Instagram, don't shut me off or both of my streams will be finished. So this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. We're drinking coffee here on Instagram, sharing a few thoughts about life and our day and our coffee, and well, that's okay. Mm. 
Uh, again, it's the pumpkin spice. You guys almost got me last night live. Uh, said it earlier. I uh, got home from my day. It was kind of a long and tiring day. I'll tell you what. It takes a lot of energy cheering at a cross-country meet. You're running around. I guarantee I got more running in than the runners did. Uh, but I got home last night. I brewed up a pot of coffee. I thought about hopping on live. I sat here in front of, you know, in the same spot pretty much and kind of thought about it and started drinking some water and enjoying the water and said, you know, I might as well relax and unwind on my uh, Saturday evening and uh, be ready for my Sunday tomorrow and uh, decided to kind of get comfy in bed. And uh, there was a uh, Godfather marathon going on on uh, one of the TV channels and watched about half of Godfather 2 and really enjoyed that maybe more than I had before and started watching the uh, third Godfather which came out I think in 1990 and uh, got maybe an hour hour and a half into that and started feeling a little sleepy felt a little sleepy and kind of decided maybe it was time, and I turned it off, and I rolled over on my side. I'm like, a, I'm a little bit of a side sleeper. I think it helps me breathe a little better, and uh, found some, again, yesterday, although it was great in so many ways, uh, had a, some conflict in it, and uh, was still working through it, and found some spiritual, uh, meditative audio to listen to and kind of listened to that and kind of drifted off into a deep sleep and woke up a few hours later and uh, found some different audio to listen to and then woke up again this morning at 520 and uh, laid there, struggled with some thoughts, caught myself struggling with the thoughts got my frame of mind in a more positive frame, did a little praying, asked for strength, was told by God that I had the strength and I'm okay and things are okay. And I go, well, <laughs> I'm a little skeptical. I'm a little skeptical, but if you say I'm okay, I'm okay. And with that, I got up and got my day started and brewed my coffee and sat down and started talking on YouTube and then started talking here on Instagram. And been kind of a quiet audience, kind of a smaller audience today. Uh, and that's okay. You know, I think life gives us what we need or what we can handle. And if we don't feel we can handle it, uh, I think we are underestimating our own strength. And, uh, once we get through it, we come out better than we were before and more experienced and a little smarter, a little wiser and a heck of a lot stronger. And, uh, yeah. Again, we try and learn a little bit every day. I experienced going live here on YouTube as well as on Instagram. That had to be worth something. I'll probably try again tomorrow and see if I can figure out why it shut me off or turned me down, <laughs> turned me off. Kind of hurts my feelings again, but such is life. Enjoying my coffee, enjoying my morning. Feels great that it's 6.35 a.m. and that I have uh, uh, about three more hours uh, here before I head off to work this morning. I'm probably gonna have a long day at the restaurant probably hopefully do pretty well financially because I need to. I got a lot of financial responsibilities. I will tell you what. Tell you what. <laughs> Money does not buy happiness. Don't think it does. Don't chase after false idols. Think your life will be great when you need to make your life great today. Uh, don't wait for the new house, new car, new whatever to think you can start living life and enjoying life because that's not true. However, as a twice divorced man, uh, having a little more uh, revenue, I tell you what, will feel good. Will feel good. So, anyway. 
those are my thoughts today. My cup's almost gone. gone. My audience has been quiet. Not a whole lot of interaction from you guys. I blame you for that. I'm here. <laughs> Kimmy Cat's here. Kimmy Cat, ask me something. <laughs> Keep me on. Hold me on. Squeeze the grip. Or don't. Happy Sunday! Kimmy Cat responded, asking me she shall receive. Happy Sunday to you, Kimmy Cat. Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't sure I was actually talking uh, to anybody. I wasn't totally sure I was talking to anybody. I was a little worried. I'll tell you what. Uh, you never know. You never know. And like you might need to push a button. <laughs> like I didn't have a, the audio going. No wonder my stream finished on YouTube because neither my camera nor my audio was going over there. And YouTube just got bored of my live. This is the worst live video we've ever seen. Coffee with Ken. We're going to shut it down. And then I thought it was happening on Instagram. Mortgage Zeus is late. B Jock is here. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to get a little more coffee. And I'm going to come back and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Well, I guess we don't need to know. Uh, we don't need to know. But what I do know is I'm going to get a little more coffee and uh, go from there. Ooh, oh. Oh, oh. There we go. Somebody's in Barcelona just having their coffee. I feel like we're just joking in the kitchen. Only good vibes. Oh, well, that's so nice. That's so nice. Again, I don't know what audience, what viewers want or expect. I think there's times when I put a lot of pressure on myself to say some wise words or have some, uh, offer some great value. And I don't think I need to. I think the show is called Coffee with Ken for a reason. It's not called like wise words or great content or I'm awesome. Because <laughs> very well, I may not be. I'm just a guy having a cup of coffee. Mm. Oh, Anyway. Met a couple uh, ladies that make me smile thinking back on it uh, yesterday at the coffee shop. A, a real colorful woman that had a pretty shirt on and stylish glasses and uh, a younger woman who it turned out I'd met before. And uh, I sat down and I just got back from my cross country meet and I went, oh, and I think I startled the ladies next to me and one of them looked over and she goes, hey, coffee guy. And I looked at her very beleaguered. That's a fun word, beleaguered. I said, how do we know each other? She goes, well, we don't, but we met about six months ago. And we got to chatting and it was really nice. And uh, they were nice women and made me smile. And uh, it's about all the story I have about that. But still thinking about it, still making me smile. Sure feels good smiling rather than uh, fretting over conflict, I'll tell you that. So maybe I should just think of the nice conversation I had with these two women rather than the conflict. Or maybe think about the cross-country meet or my beautiful smile and my big girl or how I'm going to get to see my uh, second daughter, Morgie, uh, on Friday do her thing. And how I'm going to get to go to work today and work hard and work well and uh, do my thing. How did OE Cross Country do? Madtown 86. Uh, oh, hey, I think I know who Madtown is. That's Bradley Clark. Uh, they did well. They did well. I was cheering for, I mean, I scream loudest uh, for the, uh, oh, the oldest daughter was on cheer at OE. Wow, we got some locals joining. 
Uh, my second daughter's a cheerleader at OE, so that's fun. For anyone that doesn't know, we actually do get people. I got somebody from Ireland watching. They're going, what the heck are they talking about? OE. It's Oswego East. Uh, I'm twice divorced, and my first wife uh, lives in Oswego, which is a town about 10 miles from where I'm at right now, or maybe 15 miles. And it's where my daughters live and go to college, or go to high school, I mean, and the oldest goes to college. And the second daughter is a sophomore in high school and is cheering for the Oswego East football team and I think enjoys it. And she's got a lot of gymnastics background and I haven't seen uh, her cheer yet this year because I work most Fridays. I work most Friday nights. I tell you what, <laughs> twice divorced and waiting six nights a week really makes visiting the kids challenging. It does. But either way, you take off, you plan for it and you take off next Friday so you can go to the game. And I took off yesterday so I could go to the cross-country meet. And uh, I don't know, I think it filled my soul hanging out with my uh, uh, oldest yesterday morning. And I know it gives me some peace. It gives me some peace knowing I'm going to at least see my daughter compete next week because they grow up quickly. I'm going to get all teary-eyed. Uh, they grow up quickly. And when you don't live with them every day, uh, they grow up even quicker. And I'm trying to learn lessons from my first divorce that can help on my second divorce and improve the relationships I have with the little ones. Uh, and I think I'm learning them. And I think I'm going about it differently. And I'm hoping, uh, I mean, I know it's going to work the way it's supposed to. <laughs> but, hello, Vicky. Good morning to you. Oh. So, anyway. I don't know what I have for you. Maybe I don't need to. Did yesterday's show and it was kind of me just dumping thoughts and going, I don't know if I can keep going. I don't know if I want to keep going. <laughs> I thought about it. I go, who the hell am I going to have coffee with it? Yes, on a Saturday morning at 6 a.m. I guess I could sit there by myself. Or I could just change the feeling of my show and take the pressure off my show and just kind of drink coffee and talk. And I did and it felt like a really good show. It felt like I was getting stuff off my chest that needed to come off. Kind of got a captive audience. If any of you got a bad attitude, I can remove you from the conversation. Divorce is hard. I'm 10 years post-divorce. Finally feel like I'm back on your feet. Yeah, Kimmy Cat. I'm twice divorced. <laughs> and the first one crushed me. And the second one crushed me. Yeah. You know, I wonder about marriage. I wonder about all that. But as hard as the two divorces were, were I don't regret the four beautiful children uh, that I brought into this earth, onto this earth at all. And even though I don't get to see them as much, and even though I feel like... Uh, Sometimes it's more than I can afford to cover the financial responsibilities. Honestly, I'd like to be giving more money to my oldest for college, but holy crud, holy crud, uh, holy crud. And uh, yeah, divorce can be uh, crushing spiritually, financially, emotionally. And I think one thing I'm doing well this time is holding off on dating or not feeling like I have a void a romantic void in my life uh, because I'm not with an, a woman and I think that comes from probably not drinking alcohol or not smoking pot and maybe having a little more faith and being a little more patient and being a little bit more okay with being by myself uh, 
because I know, <laughs> you know, I wasn't okay being by myself for most of my life. And after a divorce, you feel very alone. You know, you're used to having your kids in your home every day and suddenly they're not. And you're used to defining yourself as a happy, happily married father. And then you're not. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, it does feel good that I know I'm on the right path and I know I'm doing things better. I'm not doing things perfectly, but I'm trying pretty hard. And, uh, you know, I think part of me trying hard is uh, hopping on live. Hopping on live, I don't know. I like it. It feels good. It's therapy for me. It grows. My audience grows. I dual streamed this morning. Although YouTube's sitting there shut down, stream finished. I didn't finish the stream. You shut me down. <laughs> I'll work on that tomorrow. So we might go live again tomorrow. With you. We'll invite YouTube to see if I, my audience grows. I had eight views at the peak of my audience on YouTube. It was three. The average view duration, in case you want to know, was seven minutes and 19 seconds. So that means I got about an hour worth of view time over on YouTube. Eh. Eh. Something. It didn't cost me anything. Maybe learn from it tomorrow. Maybe or maybe not. YouTube's a good live channel. I would like it to grow. I would like, I think it's the most sound business uh, for anybody out there that's thinking about creating content. I think there's a lot of flashes in the pan in terms of social media platforms that come on and uh, reward content creators, but the platform changes or goes away. And it feels like YouTube's kind of stood the uh, test of time and it has the best or most consistent or most reliable uh, compensation package, I guess. I mean, not much. Don't think I'm talking a lot of money, but it's some. And it uh, feels good to be building it. And would like my audience over there to grow. And I thought maybe hopping on live on YouTube would help my audience grow. Apparently not. I only had eight viewers. <laughs> but we get a little better every day. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be Monday tomorrow. And I'm going to work a nice long day today. And uh, I don't know what the weather's going to be like, but it's probably going to be typical fall weather. And I'm excited about my day and I'm excited about uh, my morning. And uh, uh, well, thank you, Bijak. Uh, you're right, Mortgage Zeus. It does start with one. That first step, that first step is the most important one. And the rest just kind of follows suit. <laughs> you mind if I talk about my facial hair for a minute? <laughs> Do you mind if I talk about my facial hair? It's been, I think, three days. I think three or four days without shaving uh, is my favorite facial hair length. I like, and it's weird, I like the white hairs on my face. You know, if I had hair up here, or it was a, you know, and I think it's probably traumatic for a lot of people to get their first gray or to realize they're going gray. I tell you what, you want trauma? Try going bald. Try going bald. It's a lot more traumatic, I would imagine, than going gray. But either way, I'm kind of liking the distinguished look. The white flack you can see. Might clean up my neck. Go into work. Go, hello there. <laughs> hello there. My name's Ken. Thank you for coming in today. Can we see a picture of me with hair? Are you asking for the Instagram audience? I will post, I will try and post a picture of me with hair, maybe, today. It's not that I'm embarrassed. Uh, I just... Don't totally know where they are. I might post a picture on Instagram. And you're going to have to go way back. I was at a buddy's wedding uh, 30 years ago, probably. He's probably been married 30 years. And I'm wearing a tux, and it's got me with my blonde hair. And if I can find it, I will post it here on Instagram today. Uh, so you get an idea 
of what I look like. Somebody, I went to Jamaica in 1992 with a buddy that uh, is still a friend of mine. And he sent me a picture of us and we got our shirt off and shirts off. We weren't wearing one shirt. We both had it. We were walking up what was called Dunn River Falls in Jamaica. And uh, beautiful place, beautiful, really beautiful place. And I have hair. <laughs> and I must say I look pretty good. Probably easy to look good when you're 24. It's probably harder to look good now. But we do our best. And I uh, think I look okay. I think I'm ha sans hair. I mean, even with gray fleck in my chin. I'm okay with where I'm at. I feel great about where I'm at. And uh, it's fun to look back. Uh, but it's more fun to look forward with some excitement. And I'm looking forward with excitement today for the little things like a sip of coffee. For the two hours I have between now and when I have to get ready for work. Uh, for the relaxation I get in bed and any little adventures I have between now and then. The bite of fruit, the sip of hot coffee, the cool feeling of the air conditioning blowing on me. And... Uh, uh, the joy that I do have in my heart. And I'm looking forward to my Sunday, and I hope you're looking forward to your Sunday. I hope uh, you're feeling good, that uh, your week's gone real, real well, that you're loving yourself, that you're forgiving yourself. And as always, I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.